Listen, I know, I'm way behind schedule. You know how it is, life happens, and well, life happened and I fell behind on this project. But I'm stoked to announce that I'm locked in and have made some good progress on my first Ribbon Master. As of now, I'm transferred out of Gen 3 and into Gen 4, the first major milestone in the journey, marking our departure from the GBA era. So let's recap how we got to where we're at now. First things first, I ended up switching which Pokemon I'm going to be ribboning. As much as I love Snorlax, it didn't make a lot of sense to me to settle for my third favorite Pokemon when my number one was right there. It was a hard choice to make, but ultimately it makes the journey all the more special to me. This of course means that I can't get one ribbon that Snorlax was able to. That being the National Ribbon, which you get in Pokemon Colosseum or XD for purifying a Shadow Pokemon. This Espeon has evolved from the starter Eevee in Pokemon XD, meaning it was never a Shadow Pokemon, and as such misses the opportunity to get the National Ribbon altogether. This doesn't bother me too much, since while Espeon is the mascot for this journey, I'll be ribboning some other Pokemon on the side for as long as I can before the shot down to Pokemon Bank, and some of those have national ribbons. Like the Kanto Legendary Birds, which I went through the trouble of catching in Premier Balls for aesthetics. Except for Moltres. I don't care about Moltres. Who the f- In Generation 3, we can get a total of 26 ribbons on our Espeon. The first actually isn't in Hoenn, despite what the title suggests. The first ribbon we got on Azalea was the Earth Ribbon, the only ribbon she can get of the two that exist in Pokemon XD, for the reasons we talked about earlier. The Earth Ribbon is awarded for defeating 100 trainers on Mount Battle in a row, which sounds a lot harder than it actually is. Completing the game in XD allows trading to the Gen 3 GBA games. So to grease the wheels on this Mount Battle thing, I EV trained my box legendary and threw that sucker in the daycare overnight a couple of times to juice its levels. Hopping back into XD, I riz the lady in the basement of the Fennec, Fennec, Fennec? Fennec Pokemon Center into letting me smuggle in an undocumented Kyogre and his fucked up little goblin associate. At this point, we're able to just sit Miss Azalea in the back seat with some snacks and a movie and let the boys take care of things. Kyogre would just water spout or surf every turn, and Sableye was there to take care of any stragglers that survived the splash zone, as well as being our designated Cheninja counter. When I say it was brain dead easy, I mean like, holy shit man, I was just mashing A the whole time. We did run into some interesting trainer class names though, since Coliseum and XD were very creative with their naming conventions. Casual dude. What a sick trainer class. Yeah, I'm just kind of a casual dude. Casual guy. I love this. Wait, wasn't the last guy ca wasn't the last trainer class casual dude? What's the distinction between the two? At the summit of the mountain after 99 battles, our final opponent was Mount Battle Master Battleus, who has a team that probably would have been challenging to someone not spamming level 100 rain boosted water spouts. Just like that, that's our very first ribbon in the bag, as well as our choice of a free Johto starter. And you already know who we picked. Moving back to our copy of Sapphire, we're able to get three more ribbons pretty easily. The first of which is the Champion Ribbon, obtained by defeating the Pokemon League and entering the Hall of Fame in any Gen 3 game. As fun as it would have been to actually let Azalea participate here, as well as in the previous Mount Battle Ribbon, she's able to get these ribbons without being sent out, which is important for us because we need to limit her XP gain and keep her below level 50 for the first Battle Tower Ribbon. But before we head to the Battle Tower, we're able to grab the Effort Ribbon in Slateport, awarded for having maxed out Effort Values, or EVs. We'll need to reset them at a later point in the journey so I could properly EV train her, since they're pretty randomly distributed from using her in my playthrough of XD. But for now, we can finally move on to where the ribbons begin to get more interesting. Battle facilities are a type of location first introduced in Pokemon Crystal, where you face off against a series of harder than average trainers without access to your healing items. During our Ribbon Master journey, we'll find ourselves in lots of these across future regions. But the battle facilities in Gen 3 are probably some of the best known in the series, due to their prevalence in Emerald's promotional materials and their iconic imagery of unique locations like the Battle Pike and the Battle Palace. We won't be visiting Emerald, however, mostly because I'm not paying that much for another Gen 3 game right now, but also for another more strategic region. Reason. The Ruby Sapphire Tower has trainers with noticeably stupid AI, often bringing unevolved Pokemon or repeatedly using ground attacks against Pokemon unaffected by them, allowing for safe sweeps in a lot of matchups. This made the level 50 battle tower a breeze with the team I'd built, and all I had to do after reaching the final set was swap in Azalea in the back of the party and let the other two take care of the heavy lifting for a single set of 7 battles. Now with four ribbons under our belt with little to no resistance, it was time to step into unfamiliar territory for a bit before we come back later for the level 100 battle tower. 
I've never been one to do contests much in Pokemon games. I'm not sure why, maybe I found them unrewarding, boring, confusing. Who knows, man, I have ADHD, it doesn't take a lot to make me not do things. I definitely did them a little when I was younger, but I'm not gonna lie, I think it was mostly because I thought the judge's sprite looked funny. The point is, I don't know what's what in the contest circuit, and needed to learn, at least enough to get all the ribbons I need to move on. There are five categories of contests, each with four ranks, and an additional ribbon that I could get by performing exceptionally well in a master rank contest, totaling 21 ribbons for the contests in this generation alone. This is by no means a contest guide, but if you're interested in that, I will link some of those in the description. For the purposes of this video, the extremely basic version of how contests work in Gen 3 is going to be good enough. There are two parts to contests in Hoenn, the first of which is a judging of visual condition. This is based on a set of stats that are influenced by Pokeblocks, something that you may be familiar with if you've ever evolved a Feebas in the earlier games. I'm not going to go into too much detail about Pokeblocks because I'm going to be real with you, Chief. I still don't really get it myself. But I was able to bumblefuck my way through guides by Sadistic Mystic and Sir Toasty Toes to get like, good enough-ish visual stats. Honestly, I was kinda anxious that these visual stats wouldn't be enough. Luckily, there's another way to get the edge in visual appeal, and that's Scarves. If you max out particular stats and show them to the Pokemon Fan Club Chairman in Slateport, you can get a scarf for each corresponding contest category. Having the contest participant hold one will increase the visual stat of that category, making it easier to compensate for suboptimal visual condition. You know, like what I have. The second part of judging is the appeal, where you use moves to try to rack up hearts, excite the crowd, and sabotage others. In contests, moves are totally different, having effects and synergies they typically don't in a battle setting. When I say synergies, I refer to what is known as a contest combination, a pairing of moves that starts with a setup move and is followed with a second move that is given a larger amount of hearts than if those moves were used individually. This is often enough to completely ignore the category you're competing in and win with moves that don't match the current type of contest. In Espeon's case, we we have a couple of options, due to Calm Mind being a setup move, with follow-ups being a number of moves that it gets access to, namely Light Screen to protect ourselves from being jammed, and Psy Beam for its high heart yield. Espeon is also able to learn another move that can be helpful in contests when you end up last in the appeal order on the final round and don't need to worry about its recovery turn, and that's Hyper Beam, which attempts to startle Pokemon that move before it, causing them to lose hearts, potentially protecting your lead from being taken away at the very end. This plan turned out to be pretty solid, and with only some minor difficulty at the higher levels because of our visual condition, I was able to clear every contest ribbon in about 5 hours. Thanks to the potency of contest combinations, we were also able to draw the attention of the local art artist, who painted our glorious Bingus to be displayed proudly in the Lily Cove Museum, a feat that awards us with the Artist Ribbon. With all the contests complete and our ribbon count at 25, there was only one left to get our hands on, and that's the second of the Battle Tower Ribbons, this one being the level 100 version of the tower. Where we didn't struggle much in the level 50 tower, it seemed like luck wasn't on our side as much the second time around. On multiple occasions, I got to the last set of trainers only to be met with some variety of nonsensical fuckery. Notably, the first time was due to losing four attract infatuation coin flips in a row. This is a failure on my part, because the typical Battle Tower team recommends using a Metagross, who circumvents this issue by not having a gender, so attract fails on it. But I wasn't using one, and didn't want to train up a whole new Pokemon from scratch because building a Pokemon in Gen 3 is a painfully slow process. I'd say in total, the level 100 tower took 5 or 6 attempts to clear with the team I had, and the key to our victory on the last ribbon turned out to be Azalea herself, who I taught Protect so I could use her as Reggie Explosion counterplay to survive the trainers that spam them towards the end of the tower. She didn't have to do much in terms of getting kills herself during the entirety of Gen 3, but thanks to her new roles and Explosion Blocker, she finally gets some screen time in a battling-related ribbon. Atta girl! With the level 100 battle tower cleared, Azalea officially has all 26 of the ribbons an Espeon can have at this point in the journey, and after a bummer of a safari week, we're ready to get the hell out of Gen 3 and migrate into Soul Silver to start getting the Gen 4 ribbons. It is time to migrate the Bingus. Alright, so obviously, we pick the Bingus, then a couple of other dudes. Just cause. Fuck yeah. If you're not already, please be sure to subscribe to make sure to see when part 2 of this journey comes out. I promise this one won't take as long as the first. I'm actually planning on doing a lot more Pokemon content from now on, so your support would mean the world to me. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon!